Uh, good afternoon. Um, on behalf of the Lyon family, uh, they wish to make this following statement. March 25th will mark 39 years since Kate and Sheila were taken from our family. Throughout these years, our hopes for a resolution of this mystery have been sustained by the support and efforts of countless members of law enforcement, the news media, and the community. The fact that so many people still care about this case means a great deal to us. We really, we especially appreciate the tireless effort of the Montgomery County Police Department, the FBI, and all agencies that have worked to solve this case. We are grateful for any information the public can provide to help bring this story to its conclusion and ask that the family's privacy be respected during this time. Good afternoon. Uh, Chief Tom Manger, Montgomery County Police Department. On uh, March 25, 1975, 12-year-old Sheila Lyon and 10-year-old Catherine Lyon left their home and walked to nearby Wheaton Plaza. The girls never returned home. This case shocked our community in 1975 and has never been forgotten by the police department or anyone who followed the case 39 years ago. Our cold case squad has been able to identify a man who is currently incarcerated as a convicted child sex offender, and we have established that this man was at Wheaton Plaza on that day and may have had contact with the Lion Girls. The person of interest is Lloyd Lee Welch, also known as Michael or Michael Welch. I want to tell you what we know, and after I finish uh, uh, filling you in on, on uh, details we've been able to establish, uh, I want, uh, I'm then going to ask for uh, the public's help, anyone's help who may be able to fill in some of the blanks that um, we're dealing with. Uh, investigators have established the fact that Welch was at Wheaton Plaza on March 25, 1975. We've also established that Welch was observed paying attention to the Lyons sisters while at Wheaton Plaza. Welch now has multiple convictions for sexual offenses against young girls and has been incarcerated since 1997 in the state of Delaware for one of these offenses. Welch has criminal convictions involving young female victims in the states of Virginia, Delaware, and South Carolina. Although he is originally from the Washington, D.C. area, Welch has traveled extensively throughout the United States during the 1970s, 80s, and early 90s. Uh, he was employed by a carnival company which traveled to various locations throughout the United States, often setting up at shopping malls. Welch was a ride operator for the carnival. He also was accompanied in his travels, uh, was often accompanied in his travels by his girlfriend, Helen Craver, who was also employed by the carnival company. A picture of uh, Helen and Welch are there uh, on my far left. We, what, we're, we've released uh, publicly a list of uh, nearly two dozen locations where we know Welch was uh, from 1974 through 1997. I'm not going to read all of them, but he um, uh, not only was he in the D.C. area um, for, uh, during the time in the late 70s, but we know that he was in North Miami Beach, Florida in 1980. Um, he was in, uh, incarcerated in Maryland from 82 to 84. He was in Los Angeles uh, in 1987, Sioux City, Iowa in 87. Uh, he was in a number of locations in South Carolina from 1988 through 1994. Uh, he was back in Baltimore uh, in 1994 and in Pennsylvania uh, in 1994. He was also in Prince William County in 1995. These uh, locations and, and dates have been, have been provided to you. And the reason I share that is because uh, it's important that um, we 
tried to determine if he may have been involved in any criminal activity uh, in any of those locations uh, during that time. And um, Welch was uh, also arrested uh, back in the mid-70s for a burglary in Montgomery County on Hobson Street, which is just uh, a few blocks away from Wheaton Plaza. So we know that he was involved in criminal activity here uh, at that time. Uh, we also know that Welch had some connection or uh, was, was seen um, uh, in the area uh, surrounding the, Walter, the old Walter Reed Annex uh, on Forest Glen and Seminary Road. Uh, many of you know that there's the, the uh, old castle church, as people used to call it, um, uh, at that location. And we know that um, he used to hang out in that area as well back in the 70s. Uh, he was known to hitchhike. Uh, around the D.C. area, um, spending a lot of time in Silver Spring and Wheaton. Uh, he was also known to walk along the railroad tracks from Kensington to Silver Spring. Um, he's been uh, over the, the past, or, or prior to 97, um, at, uh, from the 70s to the 90s, he was also employed at various locations as a landscaper, including his employment uh, with the Carnival. Uh, much of the time during the 70s and 80s, uh, Welch was considered a drifter and is believed to have stayed in hotels and homeless shelters. Now, that's what we've been able to uncover. Um, our cold case detectives have been able to uh, establish. So we're looking for the public's help. Uh, anyone who has any information about Lloyd Welch, uh, they uh, very likely could know him as Mike Welch, uh, an alias. Uh, anyone that has information about him, uh, during that time between the 70s and the 90s, uh, we, a we asked for them to contact uh, law enforcement. Anyone that has information about Helen Craver, uh, we would ask uh, information. Uh, Ms. Craver is now deceased, um, but uh, anyone that had, uh, has information about uh, Ms. Craver is asked to contact us. In addition, we have established that one of the uh, security guards at Wheaton Plaza um, one, uh, a security guard that's been described as the captain of the security guards, uh, on the, on the, who was working there on the date of the Lion Girl's disappearance. Uh, we're also looking for any information about the identities of any of the security guards uh, that were working uh, at Wheaton Plaza during that time. Um, all, of, all of these folks, we believe, uh, are all, all of the, the, the security captain um, and anyone that would have information about um, Lloyd Welch, Mike Welch, um, or Helen Craver, uh, we believe could help us fill in some of the blanks and assist us um, in, uh, in determining more information about Mr. Welch, who at this point um, is, is a person of interest in the case. Uh, I want to um, point to the, the um, pictures on, the, on the, my far right. Uh, you've got a picture uh, of Welch. Uh, from 1977, uh, after an arrest, um, the drawing, the, the, the uh, sketch on, that is to the uh, left of his uh, picture, um, is a uh, crime, uh, is a sketch that was done of uh, an individual who a witness uh, at the time of, of the Lions Girls' disappearance. Uh, gave a description of a man that was following uh, and may have had contact with uh, the Lion's sisters. So um, as you can see, there certainly is a, a fairly strong resemblance between uh, the photo and, and the sketch. So we've got um, uh, the, the uh, cold case squad uh, has, um, like, like with all cases that we reopen, uh, we have um, interviewed the uh, witnesses that are still around from the original case. We're looking at new, new information always comes along. Um, and certainly the fact that um, uh, Mr. Welch, who uh, we established, was, was at the scene uh, looking at his criminal history since, since that incident um, has made him uh, a, 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 an important person of interest in this case. Um, before I um, uh, or answer any questions that you might have, I want to um, uh, introduce Steve Vogt, who is the uh, special agent in charge of the Baltimore field office of the FBI. Steve. Thanks, Chief. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for coming out here. We appreciate all of you coming out today. And as the Chief mentioned, 
We hope to find anyone who may have come into contact with Mr. Welch during his extensive travels. We know that covers a lot of territory and a lot of time. So we've set up our 1-800-CALL-FBI hotline, so anyone who has information can call us, and here's the number right here to my right. You can also go to FBI.gov and submit details there as well. We've got 56 field offices across the United States, so we have many resources to help track down any information reported to us. We need everyone who may know something to come forward. Regardless of how insignificant it might seem, it might be enough to put the pieces of this puzzle together. We know we're asking for people to remember things they may not want to think about. It's not an easy thing to come forward if you've been assaulted or if you know someone who has. You may have tried to put it behind you, but the information you provide could help lead us to information about what happened to Sheila and Catherine. They deserve justice and their family deserves closure, just as you do. I'm in charge of the FBI in Maryland. I'm also a father. I can't begin to imagine the pain of not knowing if my children were hurt in any way. I can't imagine what pain this family's gone through over the last 40 years. So please contact us if you have anything to share. 1-800-CALL-FBI. Thank you. All right. I'm happy to take a couple of questions. What led you to him? The, um, when we went back over um, all of the information that was, was, um, that was accumulated at the time of the occurrence, um, looking at it with fresh eyes, having the ability to look at folks that we uh, had established were at the scene, and then uh, looking at um, uh, where the, some of these folks are now, um, that, was the, that was the lead that we were looking for. Was he always on a list of potential suspects from the beginning? Uh, no. When did he become prominent as a potential suspect? When we were able to uh, determine his, his criminal history over the past 30 years. Do you so have when any did that happen, though, Chief? When did he pop up as a recently? Recently. recently. <laughs> Chief, do you have any physical description of this captain of the security guard that could help us in finding him? Um, I, I, I do not know, but if we if we get one, we'll um, and we'll let you know. That, and also, in, in association with, he, you said that he may have had contact with the girls that day. Is there any description of what that may have been? Uh, Th this is based on. Uh, witness testimony of, of folks that were at the mall and saw the, the girls there. What's he it's, saying to you, Chief? What, what's Mr. Welch saying to you? What, what, we're, um, I'm not going to talk about how we got any of this information or... Um, or mm -hmm. Has he been uncooperative? I'm not, not going to talk about Mr. Welch other than we're trying, that's what we're trying to get information from the public to, to fill in those blanks. Is what, there what any... Will take, will, what will it take to allow you to move ahead and charge this guy? Well, I, I think one of the things that we're hoping for is that based on uh, his criminal uh, past, uh, his convictions, um, we believe that there may be other cases in these other states, uh, other locations where he was during that time, um, that may, we may be able to, um, uh, we may be able to, to connect him to, and uh, that, that's going to be helpful in terms of us um, Dealing with with this case, what kind of behavior would be right now instead of a suspect? What's the difference, and what will it take to change that? Well, um, I think um, if if we are able at any point to get uh, enough information to, to charge someone, whether it's Mr. Welch or someone else, um, that that's when they become a suspect. At this point, we don't have we don't have that. That's why we're asking for the public's help to, to give us any additional information. And what's the significance what of this couple? Yeah. Um, that was um, Mr. Welch's girlfriend for a number of years, and we're trying to find anyone who may have known uh, Ms. Craver. Uh, we're uh, seeking information about her as, as well. a possible Is accomplice. Or? Is she like a person of interest? She, uh, she is not. She was his girlfriend, and we're trying to uh, get any, anybody who has information about her. Um, yeah. We'd like to talk to Chief, him. was he at the mall that day as part of a carnival operation? Was there a carnival going on? I, 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 I don't know. Chief, are you unable to charge this man without additional information from the public? Uh, if, if we were able to charge somebody, we'd have done it. Chief, once Welch became a prominent person of interest in this case, 
have investigators done any searches at places where he frequented uh, as a result of this? Line well, this uh, this is exactly why um, we need additional information. I mean, we 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 need to know more about his activities. Uh, we've got a uh, we we've, we've got this timeline of where he was at on, on different times during that twenty some year period. Um, but we there we need more information to to start doing those kinds of you things. You need to find out where he may have taken these girls. Well, that's certainly we we would. I mean, that's one of the the primary goals of, of our investigation is is to find out. So you that said he was a traveler and a drifter. Is there any indication of places in the county that he frequented that we should be alerting the public? The ones to? that I the, the ones that I mentioned. Um, the ones I mentioned in terms of the Walter Reed Annex and, uh, and in the timeline, there's some addresses where uh, we determined that he, he may have lived. Um, that Those are the ones we know about. And Chief, that's the, why we're trying to get more. The security guards at the Wheaton Plaza, I'm a little confused. Are you saying you don't know who they were and you're trying to find them? Or because would they have been investigated or talked to at the time? Um, we, we may, I'm sure that there was uh, some interviews done at the time. I, I but. We're looking specifically for an individual um, who we believe may have had contact with Mr. Welch. Do you know his name? Uh, we don't. No. Oh, okay. Well, well, that's, that's what you're looking for. That's what the looking. name of the captain who was the captain of security that day. That's correct. Well, 40 years is a long time. Is there a specific plan to find these people? And what if memories are bad? Because this happened on the Well, me days. memories will be bad, but um, um, we're hopeful that uh, we can uh, that we can get any information at all that's going to it's going to help us. Can you elaborate a little man? bit on how exactly you placed him there? When you say you've been able to establish he was there, that's through Lisa Witness interviews? I, I, I'm not going to elaborate on, on how we know this information, but we have, the investigators have uh, been able to establish that he was, he was there. How Do you believe that he was the man with the tape recorder that was seen speaking to the girls before they disappeared? Uh, I, no, we do not think that. Do you have any idea who that man may be, the man with the tape recorder? Have you looked into that? We have looked into that. We don't know that. The How many people have been working the case, Chief? Uh, we've got um, our uh, team of cold case investigators, um, a as well as when we get leads like this, we involve the entire house. Numbers? Can you give me just a rough estimate of the numbers? How many? Marcus, how many people we got assigned to homicide now? Uh, we have uh, uh, 12 detectives in major in homicide. 12 detectives. We have uh, uh, three detectives that are. Uh, in cold case that are assigned to this case specifically. Chief, what is it about this case that has you guys continue to work on it? Well, this, this is just one of, 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 a, of many cold cases that we've worked on. The fact that um, uh, family deserves justice, these girls deserve, um, uh, deserve a proper burial, frankly. Um, the, uh, uh, and we would do this for um, we're looking at all of the cold cases that we have um, evidence in. I mean, we're going to go back, and that's what the cold case squad is for. I mean, any homicide case, any sexual assault case, these are the kinds of cases that you, I think you have a responsibility to continue to look at, and, and especially with technology changing, with uh, new information coming about. There's all, we, we, our cold case squad closes cases every year. And I think that's, it's just an important responsibility of ours to do. Chief, was that Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.